In this tutorial, we're going to cover the nesting of groups of Rhino objects using globally unique identifiers or, in simpler terms, objects' IDs. If you haven't seen the previous tutorial on the OpenS component, please watch it before continuing with this video. In my Rhino viewport, I have several planar objects. There are some closed polylines, text, and some lines for engraving. These different types of objects also belong to different layers. So we want to nest these objects while maintaining their type, color and layer structure. And for this we're going to first use the Rhino objects component from OpenNest. This component takes as an input objects IDs or GUIDs, which stands for globally unique identifiers. Object IDs are used for distinguishing unique objects in Rhino regardless of their data type. So it could be a, a mesh, a text or a breadth, it doesn't matter, as long as the data type is supported by Rhino. So let's take object IDs uh, input parameter and reference the objects that we want to nest from Rhino as GUIDs. Another very important aspect for you to understand is that this component first takes closed polylines and then checks whether other objects are inside them and then groups these objects accordingly to nest them together. For this step to work, you must have closed planar polylines, not curves. This is the case at least for the current OpenNest release. The Rhino Objects component has two outputs. The first output returns surfaces from closed polylines and the second outputs objects IDs, grouped using the data tree structure, with the branches that corresponds to the indices in the first output. The following step is the same as in the previous tutorial. First we can create a sheet representing the nesting boundaries. Then we can connect the breadth geometry B output to the open nest geometry input. And now we need to use additional component, which is called transform grid or GUIDs. This component uses transformation matrices from the open nest output. And don't forget that to match the data tree structure from the Rhino objects component, we also need to graft this input. Now we can also input objects IDs as well. I'm going to use the Boolean toggle to run this component to bake the transformed objects in Rhino uh, so we can see them in the viewport. And the final note, if you would like to nest other objects or to change the nesting options, you should first turn off the transform grid component. So set the boolean toggle to false. After it is turned off, make the changes that you want, maybe change the iterations or the seed value. And only when you are finished, set the boolean toggle back to true to avoid stacking baked objects. And let's check the result. We can see that the nested objects have maintained their data types, colors, and even layers. So this is it for this tutorial, stay tuned for the next one.